Hey guys, Thad here with Iowa Budget RC, and uh, it's Throwback Thursday, and I thought I would give you guys a little treat. Uh, this is something that you never, that I don't have in my collection, and you don't see a lot of. This is an original RC10T, uh, and it's owned by my friend Bruce, and uh, he was kind enough to bring it over here, and he's kind of going to tell you a little bit, a little bit about it, and a little bit of uh, his racing history with it. And uh, Bruce wants to grab that other body, and I'll show him that too. Okay. So he raced this in a couple different classes, and then uh, he had this class here that was kind of like a stock car, and uh, had the the Lexan wing on the side and everything, and. Uh, yeah, just kind of unique. Uh, obviously, a kind of a tribute to, to Earnhardt, which is cool. And uh, yeah, that's really neat. Um, show, grab one of those tires you were showing me, okay. what you guys used to do back in the day. Well, what we used to do back in the day, we'd take uh, some foam tires and cut them down, and then we'd uh, put uh, silicone glue on it, and uh, these would stick to uh, uh, clay or dirt. Uh, we, I used to run this thing on an oval and these things would just stick like glue. I mean it was amazing how how much this silicone stuck to the uh, to the track. That is cool. Just you know something you don't you don't see every day and especially in today with all the options for for different tires. So as you can see that's just a cut down foam. Pretty neat. So what classes did you run this thing in, Bruce, when you um, ran? We met, we were limited by engines, Okay. but we could run any battery you want. So if you've got a stock motor, and we're, we're talking brush sure. motors, and uh, you could buy the most expensive battery you could afford and run that thing, and you know, you'd have to at least bring maybe two or three motors right. for a race day, like on a Saturday. Right. But uh, that's what we generally did, ran the stock class. And there wasn't a whole bunch of these cars. There was probably about a dozen guys that ran these. Okay. But, uh, so we didn't have like a modified class or a stock class. But sometimes they'd say, okay, uh, this Saturday we're running open modified. Whatever battery you got, whatever motor you got, sure. whatever tires you got, it, it's just an all-out race. Yeah. It's not, it's not limited by any, any rules whatsoever. Well, cool. Um, so what do you got? Well, let's pull the shell off of this thing and see what we've got underneath of it. So we've got, this is, you said a second generation. So it's the black pan, uh, RC 10. Yeah. Now, unlike a lot of the cars today, this only goes forward. Right. And, with, uh, with that speed control. With that speed control. Yep. But, um, these, the original shocks, they've been rebuilt. A number of times but uh, my favorite iteration of this thing is with the roadkill kit okay with the shorter shocks sure and the shorter towers but this is this is a uh, very fun truck to have this chassis has been around forever and is it's what would you well say designed. about 1990 or so yeah I, I purchased this in probably 1992 and it's got uh, this old Tekken one-way speed control, and that was just because of the way the 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 rules were back then. You could don't you couldn't have reverse. Am I am I correct in That's saying right. that? You, if you if you backed up, you were disqualified. You were sure, just, you're done for that race. And it's got a a hot match motor. I remember those. Super neat piece of RC history, and. Flip it over. It's got a few scratches and dings in it, but this thing is in really, really, really good condition for something that's been been ran, you know, and and raced for that matter. It's never been a a shelf queen. You've always uh, kind of you know raced it and 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 taken it out since it was new, and that's you know that's what they're meant for. So I went from a black foot. And I thought that was the, there was four or five of us and we had Blackfoots. Sure. And we thought, this is the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> and then one of the guys bought an RC-10T and it was like all over. Like the next weekend, everybody ran down the <laughs> hobby store and uh, 
uh, ordered one. Right. And back then, the, the, the guy at the hobby store, if you if you were paying with a credit card, he wouldn't let. He said, "Well, I don't know. I'd rather have cash." So so he had to go down and hand him cash to get it because he wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't run a credit card for it. But I wanted it bad enough. I uh, was at the old Tony's Hobby in Moline. Yeah, okay. Tony's or East Moline. Moline. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember that place. He also brought in the, his old uh, Tekken charger, which is one of the 12 volt powered ones. And I uh, just thought it was kind of a cool piece of, uh, of history to show here. Uh, part of the advertisement on this was that uh, it was a conditioner also. Okay. And so you would, uh, I had a little book with it that uh, you could uh, condition your batteries and dial them in and- Sure. And, uh, I got to the point where the, the minutes were five minutes back then, and that rate, that battery, you you just pass the finish line, and that thing would start slowing down. I mean, you had it. I had a set for practice, and I had a set strictly for racing. Right, right. And um, we got a huge heat sink on this thing. Which is pretty neat. You got vintage batteries in there with you too, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here's here's something I used to use to discharge the battery. Oh yeah, and yeah. Maybe, I don't know if you, if you guys still do that now or not. No, not so much with lipos and uh, and the new nickel metal batteries. They're uh, uh, they're they're pretty reliable. I mean the the lipos you're supposed to put them in the storage charge, um, but I use mine often enough that I don't really ever worry about it. Um, but if you put them in the storage charge, it's supposed to lengthen the life of the battery a little bit, you know, and, and less chance of it spontaneously combusting. But you didn't, we didn't have to worry about that with the old uh, uh, NICAD days, you know, and, and the nickel metal hydrides these days, you don't have to really worry about. They're, they're basically like the NICADs, but, you know, they once, once they're dead, they're dead. So, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, the battery stuff has come a long way. I, I don't know if you well, let's check out your radio. Yeah. Here's, Cause that's pretty my, unique. Uh, Futaba. This was back in the day. This was state of the art. I think I paid like 150 bucks or something. Sure. It was crazy back then. Well, I've got kind of a problem. I, I race slot cars. And so I'm always pulling with my right finger. Mm -hmm. And so I could never get to the point where I would, I would actually steer with my right hand, right, right, and so so I changed over to left hand. Being a guitar player, it yeah. was much easier to to tune like this. So uh, so what I did, I cut I cut this off of this side and, and switched it around and just uh, fixed it to the other side of the uh, of the uh, controller. Innovation. <laughs> this way, this way, nobody can run my vehicle. Right. But uh, nowadays, there's a couple companies out there that that make radios to where you can switch sides and oh, okay. make it a left-handed or a right-handed controller um but there's there's they're few and far between um but i love those futaba magnum controllers they're they're just so smooth and they work so well now this one uh i don't know if you guys you guys don't have uh crystals today though you just no uh, not not with the 2.4 gig one. stuff yeah. yeah yeah this just uh um, you know we'd have to put these in you know and we used to have like a flag you'd put on your yep. on your antenna, like blue or whatever. Was, yep. Uh, Tell you what, whatever uh, range you're running yeah, in. And, yep. Uh, and back then they used to be pretty brutal about if you're at a race and you just plug one in and pull the trigger on that. Right. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't get to race anymore. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, it was fun. I used to race down in Kiwani, Illinois. Okay. And then down in Moline. And they were indoor dirt tracks. Sure. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Good. That's just, I think it's just amazing that you still have this thing and it's still in such good condition. And, you know, now it's kind of a showpiece for you in your, in your collection of, uh, uh, you know, model cars and stuff like that that you've got. But uh, you've never, you've never gotten rid of it. You know, you still have it. And, I, th I just think that's that's awesome. It's it's a piece of uh, RC history gone by, and uh, you'll never see originals like this ever again. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, you know they're worth ten times what you originally paid for it back in the day, which is crazy. But uh, uh, th and that's exactly why I don't have one. <laughs> 
Well, we would we would run these, and then we also had Indy cars. Okay. And so uh, one part of our racing was, uh, uh, depending if we went up near Chicago, they had like indoor carpet tracks. And sure. We ran our Indy cars there. Sure. And uh, one of the fellows that uh, that raced on our team worked for Rainer Garage Doors at the time. Okay. And Rainer Garage Doors had sponsored an Indy car back. Late 80s. I remember that. Yeah, it was. Uh, but anyway, uh, he found out that uh, we were racing these Indy cars, and he sponsored our, our team. You know. Oh, cool. With, with like uh, T-shirts and yeah. entry fees and what have you. Nice. And, uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, I had a lot of fun with it, and it's still fun today. So. Yeah, it, it is. And, and uh, I know you you told me you recently got into to doing like the twenty four scale slot cars and stuff like that or drag racing. So yeah, that's kind of neat. I just started doing that. You know, that's something I did as a kid was slot car racing down uh, downtown East Moline in the sixties. Uh, mm -hmm. Oval track drag racing. Sure. And so it's just like uh, I need another hobby. You know? well, reliving the childhood, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bruce. Well, thanks for bringing this thing in. I truly appreciate it. And like I say, it's a piece of RC history that uh that needs to be seen so uh kind of set up a little makeshift table here at then uh in the uh showroom here at the shop and uh yeah so i thought i'd show you guys hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching i'm thad with iowa budget rc